Mother. Man. Anatoly Moskvin here. Yeah. Listening to Murder Mail Mayhem before I dig up the corpse for my dolls. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666 mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal Hey, Going what's up? crazy with Jesus stickers here in the Porti yeah. Studio. There are tonight. Jesus stickers all the fuck over the place. I bought a pack of all these religious love Jesus stickers and stuff. Because why wouldn't you? What's that? Because why yeah, wouldn't you? Why, would you why wouldn't I, right? Like fuck. But no, I'm playing a joke on somebody. Uh, it's a long story. After the joke has been played, I'll I'll share. Oh yeah. You think God's a joke, bro? <laughs> <laughs> that might be one of the stickers, right? <laughs> right, right. What's the one up here, Joey? Uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler God wins. <laughs> <laughs> So, Joey, I gave him the task of putting a... F- I just said, put a few of these up. I found some and good ones. Joey went crazy, put one on the clock. It's just Jesus just and Jesus all his Jesus on the glory. <laughs> Jesus. And we also have all this cool Winter's Gore stuff yeah, going yeah. on here. Fuck yeah, dude. Putting us some, in the mood. Got some good pictures of that. So, it's Tuesday, and we're doing that thing we do here at Horns Eye Studios. We're doing some Murder Metal Mayhem tonight. Episode 161, Chris. Fucking, Fucking crazy, in. man. Just keep getting her done. Crushing it. Approaching 200, which is really crazy. Right? Getting it done, man. So, Chris, Joey, everybody doing okay? Yep. Yeah. Pretty good. We're season unseasonably warm here. Yeah. And tomorrow, it's going to be, gonna be even warmer. We're going to be the next 60s. to get fucking tornadoes. Dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, it's uh, kind of a crazy uh, weather thing going on here. What shirts we got going on tonight? There, I got on my dirtiest fucking goddamn murder machine clothing hoodie, but Fuck yeah. story about my shirt. Oh, so I got a fucking Cubs shirt on right okay. now. So I got up this morning. I was fucking. I grabbed a shirt, not thinking whatever, and I put on a gorgy. Put on a gorgy shirt. Yeah. Well, I forgot I was leaving to go to a different place to work today, where there's all kinds of public around and not just employees. So uh, I had to change out of that because it's got like a whole fucking like <laughs> half of a corpse with a female corpse with fucking naked and everything. I'm like, I can't wear this where I'm going. Otherwise, I'd probably have a gorgy shirt on. Right. But I got a Chicago Cub shirt on. Hey, right now. sometimes you got to do that. You know, <laughs> Joey, what about you, man? I got a triple X maniac hoodie on. Fuck yeah. Triple X maniac, super brutal, offensive. Just fucking yeah, like the shirt I was insanity. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, Hell yeah. Go listen to him. Fuck yeah. And I'm sporting my Warfec shirt on. Uh, did that interview with the bass player, oh, yeah. Chris. Fuck uh, very, very cool. Dudes from Sweden. Li- definitely been digging on them. And so that's uh, that's why I got the shirt on. Warfec. It's my turn. Badass, I got though. the horns tonight, and we'll, we'll get into that. Hell yeah. Now, last week, we did our episode on Sing Sing Prison, Chris. I love the prison one sometimes. Not sometimes. on. Yeah, excuse me. Tex is fucking always fucking knowledgeable when we do the fucking prison shit. Yeah, I mean, he's really good with those. Fucking killing 600 plus people and whatnot. Yeah, that's a lot of execution. That's a lot of use of an electric chair, bro. Right? (laughs) Yeah, multiple executions on the same day, too, which is nuts. Um, also some good what escapes. What was that power bill like for real though, man? Yeah. <laughs> like, God damn. The escapes though kind of surprised me, you know, how many of them yeah. there were. So, I uh, mean, when you got a train tracks running through the middle of the prison. Right. <laughs> yeah. One of the inmates writes a book, uh, writes a book about how easy it was to escape in that place. Uh, well, it was a good one. And Joey, you did the metal feature on Broken Hope. Broken Those guys Hope. from Chicago. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Killer. And we had all three had mayhem stories to share, which is funny. And uh, the usual stupidity that makes Murder Metal Mayhem uh, what it is. Yes, so, sir. Kill a cage match, all that shit. Yeah. So give episode 160 a listen if you missed it. And we were just passing 800 listens to that when I checked it earlier today. So very cool. Now, tonight, 
We have got one of the most creepy, weird fucking stories. <laughs> right. we've this told dude in isn't a, a murderer, time. but holy shit! Yeah, the guy's a genius, man. <laughs> but yeah, still. And you suggested it, Chris. This is one of those ones we yeah just kind of mentioned, and then he gets put on a list, and eventually one of us is like, you know what, we need, we need to, to do, do that. that. Anatoly Moskvin. Yeah, just Anatoly what the Moskvin. Fuck is this dude's issue, bro? Yeah. The Russian linguist who had a thing for digging up dead girls and turning them into dolls. Which is fucked because his parent he lived with his parents and his parents literally thought they were dolls. Right. Yeah. So kind of, you know, like these serial killers we've talked about before. Francois was one. The parents living in the house. Yeah. Are they really ignorant to what he was doing? I don't know. I mean, in this case, they weren't hardly there. Because they lived at another home. They were just kind of there seasonally. Yeah, I think half of the year they were, half they weren't. But yeah. yeah. So when he it's was like, arrested... When though, you look at the pictures, it's like half of me wants to be like, <laughs> how can you obviously not tell that there's probably a body in there? Right. Then right. the other half of me is like, that shit's so weird looking. How could there possibly be, be a, a body in right. there? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's so weird. Very bizarre looking. So he's arrested in 2011 and found with 26 of them in his apartment. So it's going to be a crazy one tonight, Anatoly Moskvin. Definitely going to be brutal. So looking forward to this one. Uh, and I've got the horns tonight in the metal segment. I'm going to be doing the feature on the thrash metal band I've been talking about from Sweden, Warfect. I definitely love those guys. Um, I've been talking about them, um, and that's who I'm doing my feature on this week. Hell yeah. Sat down with the bass player, Chris Wallstrom, super cool guy. I got a six-minute clip of that 35-minute interview. So stick around. We talked about a lot Do of that. cool stuff. We got into some of his gear, yeah, um, the whole bass player thing. and Right, then, I'm sure. You know, the, uh, the, the album and, you know, the whole COVID thing, and of course. And then future touring. Uh, they're doing a tour with Burning Witches and somebody else in the spring. So I, yeah. I had to Get catch up. myself on his name because of the ho- the homie Gorsman, yes. Chris Warstrom. I'm just like, I know. I, I, like, okay, I did a spelled, double Chris take. is not spelled the same and last name. I was right? like, what is going on? <laughs> I did the same thing. Yeah, no, he's definitely somebody different. Um, we should have a like. A tally every time the word, no matter the spelling, the name Chris has been brought up. Since oh God, Burr Mill Band. <laughs> oh, God that'd damn, be crazy. <laughs> that'd be crazy. Some extra credit for somebody. Oh God, we'll give you a sticker if you yeah, count up a I Jesus mean. sticker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've decided now. Merch orders are going out with the Jesus sticker. Yeah, you have to like prepare so, to get your. That's Jesus a new on. thing now. Uh, killer cage match tonight, Chris. We got some listeners who yeah, gave us do. some random numbers. We got Jody Warden. Hey, how's it going, Jody? We got uh, Nikki Judy, and we got Rowdy Bonehouse getting it in. So, Fuck yeah! Thank you all for the fucking numbers. Appreciate you all. Yeah, Nikki just won the uh, Murder Metal Mayhem Activity book here recently for Fuck a yeah. contest she entered. So very very cool. And fucking. Uh, the homegirl Layla Z, but she fucking heard the Diddler on the Roof shirt and she ordered one through the Murder Mill Man. Oh, page. nice. Yeah. You know, so that was cool. So if anybody wants to Gormong your Diddler <laughs> on the Roof shirt, I still have those. Yeah, uh, get a hold of Joey. Uh, fucking, and then like the activity book too, we were talking about. We were talking about the metal segment shit. If somebody guesses the next band I'm going to do, we're going to fucking send you one of those. That's right. And I saw a couple people fucking guess, but nobody's got it right yet. Yeah. Only one winner, but I'm going to give a hint in the metal segment later on. Okay. So if anybody's so listen listening, up for that. Yeah. maybe here's your chance. So. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then, Joey, who do we got fighting in the cage tonight? It's going to be a brutal one. <laughs> Tool, t- not the toolbox killers. I, I got them on my mind because we were talking. You right, know, right, yeah, yeah. They're, they're coming up. But uh, anyway, the toy box killer, David Parker Ray. Brutal. <laughs> and he's going up against brutal. the old man, Albert Fish, the gray <laughs> man. Like, I don't know what to think This about might it. be pretty funny, so we'll I have know. to see what our variables are. <laughs> yeah, sure. and of course, they're going to have a couple of objects <laughs> and a variable to make it interesting. And that'll be in our Mayhem segment. So that's coming up. I know we got some new listeners out there from some of these interviews we've been doing. So if you're new, that's how we break up the show. Murder, Metal, and Mayhem. So you're in for a treat. We have a sponsor, Chris, for the month of December. Yes, we do. We got Kelsey Winter from Winter's Gore who sent us some 
fantastic items. It's yeah, like we're gonna we got some nice pictures we're gonna post up on the page and yeah. Thank you, Kelsey, for your support. Your shit's yeah, badass. For sure. Y'all need to order from Kelsey. Yeah, oh, yeah. she's got some finger keychains that look like real fingers. Yep. We got those kind of hanging on our light here, the and then we got some Christmas, Christmas ornaments. ornaments, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, and she's a Bundy candle too, yeah. which is yeah. cool. The Damn. Gacy candle smelled like cotton candy, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they flavor them kind of to make them. I don't know what's Bundy about that smell. Fresh there, pussy, yeah. fresh pussy, man. No, it's old <laughs> pussy, bro. <laughs> So, so Kelsey it's Winter, smooth Winter's vanilla. Good. Oh, yeah. uh, she's the artist behind all this stuff. And I did an interview with her on Sunday, and oh, I'll play yeah. a clip next week. And then we're going to have the entire interview that I did at the end of the month on New Year's Eve. They get a bonus of that full interview, which was like 31 minutes, I think. Fucking right. Uh, and this care package of stuff she sent is really cool. And so go check out her website wintersgore.com she was having an issue with her web host so if you have trouble getting a hold of her that way go to her facebook page yeah you can totally go to facebook and go to winters gore on there and you'll find her and she'll get you whatever you need so all right uh thank you to all you guys out there listening to the show we appreciate it the numbers coming in this week 2200 total listens so uh that's cool and uh, again, we appreciate the support. Just keep spreading that Hell word. Yeah, thank you a lot. It's awesome. And Chris, Joey, we got a lot on our plate tonight. We're going to be taking a little trip to Russia, and hope we don't run into, this, run into this crazy motherfucker who likes digging up dead girls and turning them into dolls. I can write. Let's get our doll making classes on, son. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Propane. It's propane. Voice of Rebellion. I remember playing with those guys when I was in low 12. Such a cool experience and a great band live. Uh, amazing. Fuck yeah. Cool to see they're still doing it. Hell man. yeah. So fuck yeah. Uh, looking forward to hearing some new propane, uh, hopefully next year. Now, we are going to be doing this crazy, creepy story. Almost went into the October schedule. Really I mean, could have fit. Could have fit, totally for sure. Fit. Um, but the witchcraft issue, we were going a uh, painted wraith, I thought would work better. Yeah. Um, so, I thought this October one, was good. Yeah, this one, you know, could have could have done great there, too. As a matter of fact, the witchcraft episode has exploded. Um of numbers of listens really that one. yeah that don't shit. surprise me a lot of witches oh no, there. there's a lot of people into that stuff so that was cool i tell you what though like this one's not a bad one to do in december i'm feeling doing this one in december okay talking about the dolls yeah family type atmosphere so this one though chris anatoly moskvin the Russian doll man, yeah, uh, the doll. pretty fucked up. Yeah. 26 dolls from the dead bodies of little girls, or girls, ranging from 3 to 25. I heard in some cases 30, but whatever. 3 to 35, or, or 25 or 30. Digging them up. You just yeah. don't, if you don't kill them... You can have them for a while, for a lot longer. Like Ed Gein, <laughs> that's why he fucked up. He murdered someone. Right, all, right. all the fucking while he was true. taking people up, no one, nobody even paying attention. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as he killed, that's true. Yeah. I'll, I'll that's go where with you that. fucked yeah. up. Yeah. So yeah, he was staying under the radar. Made twenty six of these fucking dolls. Uh, so pretty fucked up. He shares this apartment though, Chris, with his parents, which yep. makes this even more fucking crazy. So and no reminds idea. me. Of the uh, Francois episode, as we said, uh, where he lived with his parents and sister, I think. Had no idea there were dead prostitutes in the house. How do you not know that? <laughs> I mean, Those Jesus. are actual rotting corpses. At least right. these are mummified. Yeah. He blamed bro. them on the raccoons in the attic, you know. But still, uh, the the media would call uh, Moskvin, though, the Lord of the Mummies. Which is pretty Which cool. is a good one, man. Yeah. I like that. 
And The Puppeteer was the other one. A rather bizarre story. Like Joey said, snuggling in, Christmas, you know, families around. So the perfect thing to just turn up and make sure grandma comes over and, and listens. Um, and uh, speaking of that whole grandma thing, when I was interviewing uh, Kelsey Winter, we got on that subject, yeah. and she said her grandma was who got her into serial killers. And her grandma Hell and yeah. grandpa, when they were like teenagers, I think, had their picture taken in front of Gein's house before right before it got, it got burned down. That's fucking cool shit. Well, She's me, got the picture. Let she, me tell you my connection Yeah. to last week's episode. I have a grandma who got molested by a reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> wow, not sodomized, just molested? Or? <laughs> yeah, well, but, you know, so once I heard the karaoke, I was oh, like... Boy. I remember this story now. <laughs> I don't really got a grandma that happened to, but I don't think. I don't yeah, think that I was do. a good one last week. Got another one for him this week, though. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be a wild one tonight. Chris, you're the one that suggested it. How the fuck did you hear about this shit? I honestly don't fucking remember, dude. I just, <laughs> some random shit. I was just like, what the fuck is this the all about? The logarithm like, said that yeah, that was what you needed like, to see. Right? I almost Pr- feel like, like, hey, Chris, you need to check algorithm. this shit out. Yeah. I almost feel like the voice that said, hey, Chris, you need to check this out, might have been one of your daughter's voices. It very well, dude. This seems honestly, like one that it they seems might... like it's something Kaya would have That's literally saying, sent me. Honestly, yeah. now that you say that, it might. Dad, have been. you don't make dolls for me. Look at what this guy <laughs> yeah, did. He it, loved it, having honestly, a daughter so I think you're much. Right. Now that you say that, Joe, I think Kaya sent me that shit. I was like, wait, what the fuck is this? So, I, yeah, I think Joey's right. I think it's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> now, Joey, I've heard of Cabbage Patch Kids, you oh, know, yeah. but the, you know, dolls that were big at Christmas. Do you guys? Carry the Moskvin dolls at the store that you work in, and maybe Neck Tattoo might collect them. I mean, if you could sell them online, she would be about it. She'd Hell be yeah. buying them. She could flip them. Some Moskvin doll. I don't but, know uh, about I don't know about Cabbage Patch Kids. They're more like Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah, <laughs> they're fucking weird. They're yeah, like really creepy, man. The the fucking picture, like I couldn't imagine seeing that shit in real life. I, like I would have nightmares about dude, that shit. Like for real. Yeah, the whole I can see a normal face, regular like, dead body probably cut up and dismembered. Way Before quicker that, than I want to see what was up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's too much imagination allowance right there. Yeah, yeah. it's fucked up. Um, I had no idea about this until this came up with you know Chris, and so that's the thing that's great about true crime is when you think you've heard it all, <laughs> you're going to be proved wrong, like, man. Wait, There's going to be another gnarly one, and this is definitely. One of those. So it's a good one. Like I said, he didn't murder nobody, but damn. No, he did not. So we'll start at the beginning. Anatoly Moskvin is born in Gorky, a city of Russia or in Russia, 1966. Uh, I wasn't able to find out a ton about his childhood, but I did listen to some podcasts, was able to fill in some blanks here that, um, you know, even as a schoolboy, He was known to love to roam around cemeteries, you know, and that's not an in and of itself terrible. Digging it, man. Just, hey, whatever. He's smart as fuck, though. He's going to be emo. Even when he was a kid, dude, he was smarter than all the other kids Oh, yeah. Um, But he was bullied and picked on because he was different. Um, And it's this is very common with a lot of these. We talk about the bullying, you know, the picked on as a kid, uh, socially awkward. You know, not making friends very easily. So, you know, this is definitely tough on kids. And he said when he was young, he came home uh, covered in bruises and then later said he was raped by a man, but never said anything to his parents about it. Did you guys hear anything about that? I didn't see that. No, that's fucked. Yeah. Well, that's the thing with uh, looking up stuff about this guy was there was so much different stuff all over, but not a lot right. of anything anywhere. Right. It was the media. No, it's a little it hodgepodge. Like, yeah. I had to do some digging with this one, but that's, I can't remember where I heard that, whether it was the podcast or something I read it was definitely not a Wikipedia thing. Um, I do use Wikipedia for certain things, but not to rely on for facts right. and stuff. So it, they're good for timelines and the basic gist of what happened type stuff. 
Moskvin believes that uh, you know what got him arrest, uh, interested in the dead was when he witnessed a funeral procession of an 11 year old girl when he was like 12 or 13. 13, yeah. And an adult participant or participants, I heard a couple different accounts. I, yeah, I thought there was multiple, like yeah, everything I saw. There was were some adults multiple. in this procession, apparently, that forced him to, pers- to f- come, like, come with them. Come check out the, to the coffin and check out the little girl. Like, yeah. and, like You know what else kiss, I heard, Kiss too? her forehead. What else I heard was that he was just out and about, and he was approached by these two right, people he just happened to see this. that didn't even know him and they're like hey come with us and they right. brought him to this funeral oh okay. so he didn't even know who any of these people were right i did i did see somewhere that he knew who the girl was they didn't go to the same school but he knew who she was right interesting and yeah like, but i don't think he was there with his family no, no he was no, no he was definitely no, he was not, not no he was, was definitely not he was by shit. himself yeah, he was and by himself just him up walking and, and, yeah, and like go, hey you come here kiss this girl's forehead and he later would say I kissed her once, then again and again. He said it was a waxy kind of a feel, and that she wore an embroidered cap. That's and the, the fucking aunt of the fucking dead girl, right, is there, and she fucking thinks this it's is creepy, super cute. What's going on? Him right. kissing her, and so she pulls out two fucking engagement rings. Yeah, fucking, right. Uh, yeah, the girl's mom. Yeah. yeah, and gives one to him, and then puts one on her, and says, "Now you are now you're engaged. Married. You're like, married. What or, the fuck, dude? Yeah, what that's the fucked f- up? That's man. so weird. That is so weird, man. So he would talk about this marriage to the dead girl later on, and he believes that that's what really started the obsession with dead girls. I mean, no shit. I mean, the fucking God, the parallels are too fucking hard not to fucking ignore. I would well, think. Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, seriously. Um, he would have dreams of the girl often where she would tell him about black magic. He, he would dance with the dead in his dreams. That's right. Listen to their hollow screams. <laughs> now, Chris, that's a fucked up story if it's true. What do you think about that whole thing? Like Kasher said, the parallels of it, that makes a whole lot of sense the way he said it. But at the same time, the the when he was arrested, the girl's mom was already dead and everything, so there was no way to corroborate the story or whatever oh so right it's just coming from him but at the same time why why would he that, make it that up was a know? shit i saw that that was, that was common in what was it egyptian not egyptian there was some other oh yeah i did see i don't I remember, remember what it was, was either but yeah but that was like a common thing and like i said he was a very knowledgeable about cemeteries and death and everything right so as he got older he might have just been like i can use this as a story that I could just use to get sure. out, try and get out of this. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, don't... I wouldn't say it ain't true, but it's fucked up if it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, Joey, we've talked many times about these traumatic experience in childhood that, uh, you know, major effect on them. Do you think that this is what's going on here with this guy? I mean, I don't think fucking you have to be some kind of psychiatrist to say that he was, <laughs> he was influenced by all. that experience. <laughs> right. But uh, the, the thing with Moskvin, as we're going to see, is, is his comfort level with death and the dead. Like, that's where he was most comfortable at all times of his right. fucking life, throughout his whole life. Or when he was most uh, maybe excited or whatever. and I mean, this guy wasn't stupid. The guy was fucking very intelligent. Oh, yeah. So his mind might have been thinking a lot fucking more fucked up than normal, normal persons. Mentally, he might have had some issues. But fact is, he knew what he was fucking thinking in his mind. Yeah. And he definitely liked to put himself around, car, right. you know, yeah. dead shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he is a fucking brilliant 12 or 13 languages. I mean, yeah. holy shit. Um, now, Moskvin would say that he practiced black magic with things like teeth to gain more knowledge. He also used dead animals in his studies of magic. He was also into our boy, Aleister Crowley. Oh, so, yeah. Apparently, Anatoly Moskvin was a smart kid, as we've been talking about. He winds up going to Moscow University. He becomes known among these academic types because he's so fucking smart. He focused on language and also Celtic and history and folklore. And he also uh, was super interested in the occult and death and, as we said, cemeteries. 
And he had a, I read a, a library of 60,000 books. Books, yeah. Fucking crazy. That's a lot more than I have. So I have a lot, like, but not, a few not more. A few yeah. more. A few more. <laughs> so yeah, I could relate. Um, he and also just had... about the house that he lived in with his parents too. So Right, that's true. Um, he also has this large doll collection, which would be kind of weird for a young man, but, you know, hey, whatever. Uh, people who knew Moskvin said he was a genius, but very eccentric. And as an adult, he would prefer to live with his parents and never drink alcohol, never smoked, never dated, never had sex, believed to still be a virgin at 55 years old. Um, I did see in 2016, he was talking about marrying a 25-year-old who was visiting him in prison, who apparently went to the same school as him or something (coughs) like that. (laughs) Went to his trial and all that. Yeah, Yeah. so I don't know... uh, Chris, did he actually? I don't know did you ever, see anything? I didn't see where they actually got married. I remember seeing like where that was a he wanted to thing but, or that it was supposed to happen. But I don't think I ever did. I'm not a hundred percent. Yeah, because I didn't see anything more than what I just mentioned that they were supposed to get married. So who knows? Um, so as an adult, uh, Moskvin is teaching Celtic studies at the Nitsi or Nitsi. Uh, Novograd Linguist University. I probably butched the shit out of that. <laughs> uh, prior to that, he worked for the Russian government at the Institute of Foreign Languages. And again, you know, 13 languages. He writes books, articles, very well known in the whole academia thing. Uh, Didn't work- he, was it him? I can't, I watched so much different documentaries lately, <laughs> right. so I can't remember. If oh, this I is know. Right. I, I think confusing. maybe it was him though. Like he wrote a dictionary. Oh wow! Like I, you write a dictionary? Like holy fuck! Like, <laughs> I don't know, but I think he did off one of those languages or something like. Yeah, that. that's interesting. Uh, he dubs himself a necropolist and was an expert. On the local cemeteries in the city that he lived in. Also heard he's headed a a black metal uh, band. Right, Necropolis. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Necropolis. Yeah, Yeah, that would be cool, actually. Uh, 2005, a fellow academic uh, and publisher, Oleg Ryabov, commissioned Moskvin to summarize and list the dead in over 700 cemeteries in yeah, the area yeah. how the fuck are there that many cemeteries there dude that's I mean, a think lot about it dude like think about it like you just driving along through the country or just even down the interstate any small town that you go by there's a cemetery outside of it they're fucking still though that just, seems like an awful lot in an area it's not like a huge i don't know I, i'm just saying that's a lot of ground but, to cover well okay? and over there there's their cemeteries run a lot older than what ours do. And probably, like Chris is saying, real small ones out yeah. in the country and stuff. Yeah. So from 2005 to 2007, he claims he visited 752 cemeteries on foot, walking, walking 20 miles a day while he was doing it. <laughs> this is some fucking dedication oh, like yeah. a motherfucker. He said on more than one occasion he ran into some bad people who beat him up and robbed him, but he just stayed fucking with it. Uh, Joey, I saw during the cemetery visits he drank from puddles, (laughs) slept in abandoned barns, and even slept in a coffin that was due to be used for a funeral. I mean, that's fucking dedication. Well, as a matter of fact, I mean, you know, he would go down there and he just loved... Like like I said, he was comfortable among the dead, so he'd be down there, and yeah, he would sleep by him and all that. And the one time he goes down there and found a coffin that had been left open for the, he was so excited. And he was fucking talking about that shit, you know. And he was like, "I've had such a fascination with being inside the box itself, and you know all this." So that was his chance, and he said he fucking went in there and he fucking slept awesome. That's what he said. Wow. <clears throat> to I me, did see the grounds crew showed up the next day. Yeah. And we're like, "What the hell are you doing?" Yeah. Man? Fucking, that's so fucking weird. Like, how you don't have an alarm clock or anything like that back then? Like, how do you not know? Oh, you're just gonna sleep till 
this fucking obviously they have this coffin out here for a reason. <laughs> right. These people walk up with a corpse to put it in there and you're just you're in there. Sleeping in yeah. There. And like the with fucking your jammies cops, on. You yeah. Know? <laughs> the cops at multiple times would like come up on him like what are you creeping around the cemetery for? Right. And he just show him his like credentials yeah. from fucking college he's and what got he all did. The paperwork and they're like, and... oh, okay, you're doing research basically <laughs> right. or whatever. Yeah, he's got a notebook. He's writing shit yeah. down. You know, and they're like, oh, okay, you're good. Yeah, whatever. So that's his thing. Now I also saw that he tried on more than one occasion to adopt a child. Uh, he was driven by wanting a daughter very badly, but he was turned down because of his low income. And possibly because he was just creepy as fucking hell. Like, no, yeah. no, you're that motherfucker that goes around the cemeteries. You're weird. You're going to be taking this little girl with you on these cemetery right? trips? I, I don't, don't know, think man. So, what buddy. if they had fucking adopted him, a little girl, and he had been oh, fucking man. fine the rest of his right, life, though? Of his yeah, life. that's never true. Never did none of this shit. That's yeah, true. Never. So he was stopped on multiple occasions, like you said, Chris. Um, he would later say that he would dig up the bodies... Prepare them for mummification by putting a mixture of salt and baking soda in a stocking and then putting it in the body like off in the woods somewhere. Yeah, you just find a spot like outside yeah. and just let it sit there like <laughs> so I'm thinking have nobody to be finds like this in a forested thing. area where you can have some cover. Let the body completely dry out. So somewhat a mummification, not a true mummification well, right. but he like studied it you know up uh, in russia having a fist fight with a bear over a fucking corpse right that's, <laughs> that's, true. Really, no, that's mine thought. motherfucker <laughs> i never thought about that <laughs> yeah that could add a whole new yeah part to this thing um so he dries it out he wraps it up brings him home and uh then he would start the uh, doll making chris and i did see that <laughs> neighbors never had any issues with them they said he was you know quiet kind of kept to himself I but bet. they said there was a <laughs> yeah i mean he's busy mummifying <laughs> bodies and making <laughs> dolls busy bro. i got uh, all these books to write and read plus i'm making dolls out of people right? dude. I'm, Dictionaries. I'm not coming out and doing shit i'm fucking walking to cemeteries all day long right, right. 20 tired. miles a day bitch what the fuck have you done i ain't going nowhere Eating fucking bonbons <laughs> sitting there watching fucking oprah <laughs> But they're saying there's a musty smell coming from the apartment. And, you know, if he's got well, them pretty dried out, they probably wouldn't smell that terrible, bad. I mean, right, but you know, even uh, still fucked up. The area he lived in, Russia, though, or whatever, like it wasn't really a great spot. So, like, lots of the older houses were musty anyway. That's right. why the neighbors didn't say anything. They're just like, oh, well, right. that's just. That's that, just, that's just that building. house. Yeah, yeah that's just building. that house. Can't do nothing about yeah, it. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, but like we always see with these guys, even the more over the top ones, like they're able to explain it at least for a while. Right. right? Yeah. Now, the during this time, oh, I burnt my pot roast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Burnt the pot roast. Uh, during this time, Moskvin is writing articles in different publications. Uh, November 2011, the police were investigating grave desecrations in the area. There was also some Muslim hate that's crimes where they, going that's where on. They started looking. Yeah, talking to they him. started kind of ramping it up, and they ended up at the apartment of Moskvin after they caught him red-handed desecrating some graves. But I didn't hear specifically <laughs> what, what he, he was, was doing. doing. No, but the, but before that though, like they went to talk to him. To see if he had any idea why, because he was a genius in death and cemeteries and everything. So they went to him asking why somebody would do that. He just kind of flipped out on him. He was like, I don't know anything about it. And they're like, oh, okay, sorry. Then right. They left him alone. And then they that's after that is when they noticed him fucking doing the shit to the fucking graveyard shit. Huh. They're like, okay, now what the fuck's going on? Yeah, that's fucked up. But I did see that he actually did desecrate some Muslim graves. So there was like some... Pretty like breaking shit and doing some hateful it, it's stuff. It's hard to tell with him if that was just if that was meant because of that specifically, or like a distraction maybe, or that, or if it was just another grave to him and it just happened to be, you know, right? It just happened to I, be. I don't, they never really dealt because I guess he didn't really talk about it, but like 
<clears throat> I don't know if he fucking had certain ways he chose which graves. Well, yeah, he, he did. He did research. He knew their ages, like when how they died, they died yeah. and when they died, of course. And then he would go, like, lay on the grave, and if the spirit talked to him, yeah, said they wanted right. to go right, with right. him, then he would take him. He would him. fucking <laughs> dig yeah, him up and take fucked him. Up, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he would sleep Very on the fucked grave, up. But, and that's yeah. where that, whatever belief it was that he had... That's where he said that that came from, yeah. laying on the but grave. But why couldn't have he have laid on any grave and any of them could have been saying that shit to him, though? D- d- that, that was his story, bro. <laughs> right, I right. I know. And that's, what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. That I don't know if it was so much a hate thing because I think he was just doing it with so much. Because they said, like, you know, he got caught with so many dolls, but the amount of graves that, that he, he fucking desecrated right. was and he said probably he, in the hundreds for sure. Right. And there was, there was some that he said that, he didn't like the fucking dolls anymore. Yeah. So he went and buried them back in their grave yeah. and left it the way it originally was and shit. So it's like, so fuck- yeah, what the fuck's up. going on? <laughs> very, very strange. Um, so they get into his fucking apartment and they're noticing all these dolls. And I can't remember if they picked one up and like, there was like something inside <laughs> of, of it. It was the music box. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. the, the, uh, the music box that he put in the chest, that was a fucked up angle to this. Chris, yeah. what was the deal with that, man? Just uh, so the dolls could sing to him, basically. He could, right. He did some He'd fucked up shit He'd have like birthday parties yeah, straight for up him when it was their parties, birthday. singing songs. He would watching call cartoons. them by their names. They're, yeah, watching they're... cartoons with them. He'd like make sure they had like eyes, you do like buttons or whatever. Fucking, right. So they could just chill. That's That was his family, dude. Yeah. Like, for real, that was his family when his parents weren't there. He didn't right. fuck with them when his parents were there. Right. When his parents were there, there was one that was out uh, that uh, that to talked about in one of the things that I watched. And he would, like, sit it down for dinner and, like, put a plate in front of it with food. And even though he said I, he knew that they couldn't eat, but that's just so fucked up. Yeah. You know? Um, but, you know, obviously shocking for the fucking cops, uh, realizing that there were actually, you know, corpses inside these dolls and he would dress them up in clothes he found in the trash. Yeah, he'd make clothes, but he would like the clothes that he unburied them in, he kept still, right. he had them laying around. Right. Like, okay. Why did you change them? Right. Use your own clothes. I get, it's more artistic if you use your own clothes, I guess. I guess. But, I guess. It's just such a fucking strange thing. I saw one still had a hospital tag from the body inside yeah. of it. Um, and some of the dolls, uh, you know, he just, like like you said, went really all out and, like, Piece. dressed them all up and put makeup on them. And the pieces of the headstones and shit inside the body. That's right. That's right. Holy fuck. And then, like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's just crazy stuff. Now, Joey, I saw that the the whole voice box thing with the dolls, <clears throat> but how fucking bizarre is that? You know? Yeah, I don't know. That's fucking creepy. That's another, <clears throat> you know, layer to this. That if I saw that in real life, it's I would real... be fucking so freaked out by what I was seeing. And then if I heard one of them things with a music box or whatever, I'd lose my shit. <laughs> yeah, like no fucking way. That's dude. like true nightmare. That's horror shit. That is, dude. <laughs> That's real. I'm surprised nobody's done anything with that. No, and you know, and the thing with uh I don't I don't look at, you know, Anatoly Moxvin as I don't know, I don't look at him as a monster in any kind of respect. I don't think that he would harm human people like Alive. living people no that was his whole thing though. yeah i don't i don't think he was about that at all no like, i i would he agree was with just you, fully yeah. into anthropology you know anthropology obsessed with and, death man and so it's it's weird because you look at him on one side it, it's kind of like ed gein like if he had just had all the bodies and brought his mom home and all that shit that's creepy but you know okay you're a fucking sad ass old man out in the middle of nowhere oh but now you went and killed somebody so you're a fucking murderer Right. There's a difference there. And that line was never crossed with them with Anatoly that we know of. Right. And so it's just like, it makes the case that much weirder. It's almost like you feel bad for this dude in certain aspects, but it's so far out though. Yeah. Oh, I know. And Chris, like Joey was saying, the dolls look so creepy, but the whole wax face thing, like. Dude, they didn't look like people at all. The fact that like zero. No. And like. 
using fingernail polish to paint them up, like made it look even, like like you said, straight horror yeah. shit. And if you heard right, it was one like of them do something. You can look at all the pictures and shit. Obviously, yeah, you could Google this if you want. Uh, to. But like when I was looking at them, the parts that creeped me out the most though was uh, like the legs and arms. Yeah, like the faces were all fucked up, and you know, and then they had right. like big ass clothes but like where you could see the legs and there wasn't much it was just probably single layers that's whenever you're like man what's in there right you know yeah yeah. it's like what the fuck's going weird it is fucking weird man um so yeah he uh just very very creepy like you guys have been saying i agree like the stuff from a horror movie i can't believe somebody hasn't done anything with this whole moskvin story because it's fucking crazy um, he would talk to him. He would sing to him, read to him before bed. Chris, you mentioned them watching the cartoons. He's got their fucking names, their birth dates, like their real names and birth yeah. dates. And celebrates them. Shits. Yeah, has parties with them. Um, one of the dolls he kept in the family living area. That's the one I was mentioning. Um, parents thought that this was just a hobby of doll collecting. They thought it was strange. But you know they had they said they had no idea that there were human remains in them and he said his parents didn't know that yeah, they, they, they were there. So that's know. what they're claiming, who knows. The apartment was like a hoarder fucking type deal. Yeah, like I said all fucking 60,000 books and whatever he had was Right, everywhere, man. Boxes like and piles of shit, it. like CK's album collection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no shit. <laughs> <laughs> now safely at Jerosa Records there in Brookfield, Connecticut. Um, so the apartment is just an absolute train wreck. Uh, but when you look at some of those pictures you referenced, Joey, you can see, um, you know, the dolls here, the dolls there. They're just kind of scattered around. Yeah, it's fucking creepy as shit. Yeah, it's just so bizarre. In the middle of all this sheer chaos, there's this creepy doll with this wax face with, like Chris said, the, the facial features don't look anything close to real no no it looks all. like something out of a fucking nightmare is what it looks like um so you know i don't know what do you guys think about the parents do you guys think the parents had any idea i think that as smart as he was the way he was able to dig up graves and take bodies i think he was able to convince his parents somehow that or they just didn't care they just thought it was what it was i honestly really don't think they would have known Honestly, that's yeah, my I'd have opinion. To agree with you, Joey. What do you think? I'm not. Yeah, I don't really think that they fucking really knew. Yeah, and probably just assumed that it was this you know strange hobby that their sons into. Right. But that's what he's doing, and and it's not like they didn't. You know, if they would have walked in there while he was singing like Hakuna Matata with the whole group, you know, around <laughs> that the might table, have been different. Like that might have been going on here, dude. <laughs> Party hats and birthday cake and all that. Well, I mean, there was 29 of them. They couldn't all have been fucking gone on their birthday or having their birthday the same time the parents are gone, right? That's true. That's I mean, true. So what do you do there, man? Like oh, Take them sh- to Red Lobster? Or, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that works. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh, the police said that they believed Moskvin had desecrated, as you mentioned, uh, Joey, 150 graves. Uh, They found a lot of stuff in the apartment, as we talked about. This is like a hoarder type thing. Yeah. um, Of things he took from the cemeteries, things he took from the graves with the the bodies. Uh, There were pictures of dead bodies, but nothing they could prove that he had actually taken them. Uh, He cooperates with the police, said that he would have been doing this for 10 years and that his parents, like we've been saying, were gone for a part of the year. So they were like, <clears throat> you know, snow bunnies. They would go somewhere. Get the fuck out of Dodge for the for the winter. Uh, so they charge him with desecration of the graves and bodies. Uh, this could have gotten him a five-year sentence, which seems crazy. But <laughs> like we said, he didn't kill anybody. Right. So, I mean, it's <laughs> fucked up. But uh, the law at the time, uh, five-year sentence... Um, and originally, like we mentioned, that they thought that this was like some tied in with some grave desecrations of Muslims. They would have made it a hate crime, but those wound up becoming uh, getting dismissed. So 
They found him insane, and I would say, you know, probably right here with this I mean, guy. He's got some issues. Uh, he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia by a psychiatrist appointed by the court. Uh, he was sentenced to be treated in a mental hospital. The prosecution did not object. So really, everybody knew the guy was clearly not of sound mind, and the psychiatrist backed it up. So they knew that he had some issues, and so they, they put him in a hospital instead of prison. Um, he was also given a $75,000 fine. Like, how the fuck is he going to pay that <laughs> to compensate the families, you know? He doesn't have anything. Now, Joey, what do you think about the sentence, and do you know if he's still in the hospital? I mean, I think the, the sentence is about the best he probably could have got, and right. he is where he should be. He's still incarcerated <laughs> now in a... He's not living with Vince Lee in Canada? No, he, he's in a, a medical facility, um, psychiatric facility. That's I, good. I, he'll probably always remain there, I would imagine. I can't imagine <clears throat> he would get out. I mean, he... he uh, he was um when he was at his fucking trial and shit like he was telling the fucking you know the people's families that he dug up or whatever he was like you left them alone and in the dark and in the cold i brought i brought them home right and gave them life so he was like looking down on them for what what they did like you can only imagine if this dude didn't get fucking caught for any of this shit when his parents died, you know he was keeping them. You know he was. Oh, oh yeah. dude, one hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. But whew. yeah, pretty fucked up. <clears throat> pretty fucked up. Um, I did see that his case was up for review many times, but they continued to keep him, uh, which, as we've been saying, is definitely a good thing here. I think what I saw the last time was just like last year. I believe you're right. Yeah, I believe you're right. Uh, he later told police that he believed that uh, with black magic, he would possibly be able to bring the dead children back to life. So that was kind of his thing. And, Joey, you talked about that taking him in from the cold. Did you guys see where that one parent said the father of one of the girls said that he yeah. actually treated her better than I did? <clears throat> yeah. I did not see that. Yeah. Really. He, I was he, like, he was what like the fuck? Thankful yeah. for what he did. He treated her better than I did when she was alive. That's fucking crazy. That's really fucked I up. I saw another one that was the opposite. The oh, father really was bad, like, yeah. The father was like, I had her for 10 years. He had her for nine. Right. Like, he's like pissed <laughs> off, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. Um, so in his studies of the Celtic people and the Druids, uh, he believed that laying on the graves would help him communicate. So that's what it was, was the Druid thing. Um, that he would only take the bodies of those who were not possessed by evil beings. Uh, he would read obituaries, and sometimes they would speak to him, as we were talking about. Um, he would also visit the graves of the bodies he dug up, leaving notes, wreaths at Christmas, toys, and stuff like that, which is super fucked up. <laughs> they talked about some of the parents that would find this shit on yeah. the graves. Oh, my God. Uh, Chris, he also believed that if he took the body home, good spirits would be more willing to help them because they would not be under the ground. They'd be in a loving home. Yeah, because like you said, he thought he was able to bring the dead back. And I also saw a thing about that. Like he said, uh, cloning is illegal in my country right now. So he's trying to keep the bodies also for cloning. I saw that like wow. one one place. Like holy shit, you're thinking about that too. Like that's fucked up. Could you imagine fighting one of his zombies in the zombie apocalypse? No. <laughs> yeah, he'd be a bad motherfucker with 26 zombies. You know. Yeah, that's his team right there. Yeah. Uh, it's a sad story as well as a fucked up one to tell, and obviously a mentally disturbed guy who was obsessed with wanting a daughter. And like you said, Joey, if they would have given him one. Maybe he would have treated her good, <laughs> and she would have led a normal life, and none of this maybe shit not, would have happened. Maybe not, but maybe. It's a <laughs> and maybe he would have been, she would have been victim number one. Who knows? Right. You know, We don't know. Um, he claimed to not have any sexual attraction to the bodies or to any living children. He just wanted a daughter to raise, and his so parents discouraged him. His parents discouraged him. From getting him. the adoption, yeah. But... Uh, 
You know, you can understand why many of the families of these girls would be fucking outraged. Um, so, yeah, fucked up shit. And Chris, what was the uh, the one about don't bury him too deep or whatever? Oh, yeah, I uh, told him, like, because he thinks he's going to get out. Don't bury him too deep because I will come get them again. And there was one of the mothers that's, like, pissed off because she buried her daughter in an unmarked <laughs> grave. <laughs> right. Because she's afraid that right. he's literally going to come get her again. So Yeah. It's really fucked up. Some of them I saw online where they have the picture of the actual girl. And then, and the, then the, doll, the doll. Yeah, dude. I'm like, oh. That's fucked up. Yeah. So really, really crazy shit. Now, there was another one I found as I was researching this. Carl Tanzler, another well-known case uh, or more well-known case than this. He was a German immigrant. He lived in Florida. And he had a dead woman in his home for seven years, kind of like Moskvin. Um, very interesting story, though, but I believe it was just the one. But uh, I don't right. remember the whole thing. I watched the documentary about Tanzler, and it's fucked up, similar to Moskvin. <clears throat> remember that fucking... Uh, I wrote a song about it, about Levon, that fucking Vietnamese guy. I thought I talked about it on here. I probably did. <clears throat> but he uh, loved his wife so much, he dug her up and brought her home. Like, he stayed with her in the graveyard for a while and would crawl in the ground and sleep with her. And then eventually he took the body back home wow. and he would dress it up and all that shit. No shit. Yeah. Wow. That's fucked up. Weird shit. Definitely. Anything, guys, to uh, add to this crazy motherfucker, Anatoly Moskvin? No, nah. not really anything to add to it, but it was funny because like when I was watching shit about it, because, you know, much like you, Pete, like I didn't really know about this case till you know, Chris had brought it up. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm watching the shit and they're like something I'm watching. They're like, oh, you can see the pit. We're not going to show you the pictures of the dolls, but you can find them on the Internet. Right. Don't do it. You know, and they always tell you don't do yeah, it. Yeah. That's like the first thing I'm going to do. And I'm watching. <laughs> right. I was watching something about fucking Gabriel Kuhn, who's this 12 year old kid who got killed by uh, uh, Daniel Petri. Um like cut in half and all this shit like it was wow. fucked up and for whatever reason so i was watching a documentary about him and they're telling you they're like for whatever reason the police thought it was a good idea to show this picture. yeah make public the fucking crime scene photos and everything else do not go look at this you know what i'm saying they're telling you don't go look at this what's the first thing i'm gonna I'm, do course, i'm already fucking, typing it in yeah right. yeah you know right. what i'm saying of so, course so i'm like by you telling me that right just don't even fucking bring it up because right. that's gonna make me want to do it more exactly and sure enough i pull up the pictures it was fucking crazy and that's the the picture i used on the cover for my new cd like the actual picture yeah. oh. the kid cut in half but wow over some video game shit that's a good one too but wow. anyway fuck it. but it was the same thing with, with mosca and you know it's like yeah i want to see those pictures of them dolls because but it's fucking haunting though it's haunting oh yeah, yeah. it really is now next week we're going to be doing an interesting one uh feature on the keepers which is a netflix docuseries oh yeah that was nominated for an emmy and it's about a nun who ended up murdered and she worked at a Catholic high school in Maryland, and there's a sex abuse scandal going on with one of the priests. And it's rumored that the girls had gone to the nun, and the nun knew about the abuse, and that's why they had her killed, because she was going to talk. So lots of things going on with that. It's a multi-part, one of those docuseries. It's been on Netflix for a long time, that was the first docu-series I ever watched. But I did an interview recently with Teresa Lancaster, who wrote a book about it because she was one of the girls that was uh, raped by this priest. And it's going to be a good one for the holiday season. So just like okay. the Moskvin one, Chris, you know, it's going to be gruesome for the it's holidays. Re it's religious. Christmas religion, same. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, all this stuff from Winter's Gore, you know, brings that holiday yeah, spirit in here. I'm feeling it. Nice uh, eyeball Christmas ornaments, you know, stuff like that. Um, so that'll be a good one. Now, Joey, any good page a day? Now, this is crazy with the page a day because I brought up the case 
that you're going to talk about? No, 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 no. Uh, I'm not going to. I... The Mary Vincent case, the lady who had her arms hacked off, and that, that, he did that one a while. That, that was, was one first of the one. first ones I'd ever done. But okay. anyway, I've had it sitting on the table since I did it because oh wow, there were a couple that we were talking about were good stories. So fucking, I just kept them around here on the table, and that's one of the ones with Mary Vincent. Yeah. So, but Pete was watching a documentary about it, right? Yeah. And so, no, that case is awesome. And I was like, did you guys bring this up about this woman getting her arms cut off? And you're yeah. like, and Chris, Dude, you and Chris knew right the story up. when I brought it up. Right. So it's definitely one we'll have to do. Oh, but yeah. So it's good. gruesome. But, but a great story of fucking just relentless fucking perseverance, man. Yeah. Pretty amazing. And triumph. Yeah. So, uh, but with Page a Day, I mean, yeah, they got some good ones, and that was one. But I do have three for this week. <clears throat> Uh, almost to the end of this page a day. It's crazy. Yeah, that's, start on the that new one. Crazy. Get the new one out. Yep. Uh, so this one's about Operation Broken Glass. <clears throat> so in 2012, eel prices had soared to nineteen hundred dollars a pound. Say wow. eel eels okay. for eels nineteen hundred a pound. God Jeez. damn. So a lot of fucking money for some the wrong fucking business. Fuck. Yeah. So they were saying, (laughs) you know, that was putting them everywhere at risk. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Unagi. (laughs) Uh, But restrictions have been put on exports of eels from European, European Union and the U.S. because of the decline in eel populations. You know what I'm saying? They're like, no, you got to build that shit up. So they're not buying it. And you know how it goes as with any restricted delicacy item like that yeah. all of a sudden a black market pops up for that shit yep. fuck it so you have the the eel black market going fucking hard in 2012 um they would trans they would transfer these uh delicacies known as glass eels and they're basically transparent sections of eels or whatever and fuck it that's right. what people use yeah um yeah, yuck. <laughs> so then you get fucking poachers all along the east coast of the U.S. There's fucking fishermen out there brawling, throwing fist fights over these fucking eels Jesus and everything Christ. else. Wow. There, there's fucking legit turf wars over the eel shit. So in 2013, this eel poacher named Alan Perkins, he breaks into a seafood warehouse in Maine, and he tries to steal a five-gallon bucket of eels worth ten thousand dollars jesus christ Christ. five pound bucket ten thousand dollars so he's caught a month later charged with burglary theft and violating release and sentenced to seven years in jail in 2019 u.s fish and wildlife they arrested more than 20 people in a staying operation known as operation broken glass and among those arrested were tommy Zhao, a seafood dealer in brooklyn who mixed illegal eels with legally caught ones and threatened to kill anyone with a big mouth who thought of blabbing (laughs) (laughs) supposedly tommy Zhao, he would pay hitman two hundred thousand dollars to kill stool pigeons that was his claim to <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then you got Bill Sheldon, and he's a Maine fisherman charged with seven counts of illegally smuggling eels. He was ordered to surrender all vessels associated with the smuggling operation, and that included a pickup truck he had with the license plate that said E E L S Z N. Eel season. Eel season. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that was Operation Broken Glass. <laughs> eels. All right, page a day, man. Uh, This is the story of Mark Barton. Um, This guy was a day trader in Atlanta, Georgia. It wasn't really Atlanta, but it was a suburb, so fuck it. I'm just going to say Atlanta. Right. Uh, He killed 12 people July 29th. He was believed to be motivated because he fucked up uh, some investments because as a broker, I guess he made some fucking bad deals or whatever. And I mean, watch Wall Street. That shit will fucking tear you up. Break mother, mother, mother fucking off, boiler yeah. room, dude. Yeah, boiler. <laughs> <laughs> so his, yeah. they find his second wife, who he's with at the time, his second wife and the two children of his from his previous marriage. He find them all dead at their house on the fucking uh, 29th, but he was believed to have killed his wife the 27th, all with hammers. Fucking beat him in the head with hammers. Killed his wife 27th, still was with the kids the 28th, then killed them. 
Uh, he was also a suspect in the 1993 beating deaths of his first wife and her mother in Alabama, Ooh. but he was never charged. He was a suspect, but they never charged him. So he already had that hanging over his head and he fucking wow. kills them. He leaves notes all over the place at his residence, uh, for whoever found him. And he was talking a lot about Jehovah and all that stuff. So he goes to, uh, momentum securities, which is where he had worked previously he pulls out two pistols and kills four people he shot another dude three times point blank but that guy didn't die then he walks across the way to all tech investment group because this is in like a fucking investment yeah, property yeah. area or whatever so he walks over to this other building and he kills five people jesus he flees. He tries to take a girl hostage, but uh, she escaped, called 911. And whenever the cops got there, he ended up fucking putting the gun in his own mouth and killed himself. Right. But, yeah, Mark Barton, 12 God fucking damn, people dude. dead, like Jesus. Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. All right. Man. So I got one more. Uh, thank you, Paige Day. And this one is about the disappearance of Jessica Runyons. So September Sounds 8th, 2016... Sounds familiar. I think I told you about... I, I knew about this case a little Go. bit before, but anyway. Let's hear this shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so September 8th, 2016, Jessica Runyon, she's attending a house party. Um, they're, they're, they live in Missouri. I'm not sure exactly where they were. I think it was like outside Kansas City somewhere. Uh, so she goes to this house party. She goes with this dude whose name is Kyler Yust. K-Y-L-R-Y-U-S-T. Kyler Yust. That's his <laughs> <Wow>. name. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. This dude was, well, let me tell you this too. If you look him up and shit, supposedly, like as the story goes, he was in a death metal band. Okay. But I've never been able to find a name or any kind of uh, link or I don't know what that, he was probably like just somebody who like liked metal and fucking thought he was a yeah. local front man or <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Kyler, yes. He goes to this house party with Jessica Runyon's. Go. They make it to the house party. Witnesses see him there. Whatever. They leave. She never makes it home. She's never seen again. And two days later, her vehicle is found in a remote area off of Kansas City. It was burned and preoccupied. So never found the body. Now, they arrest him on suspicion for it on September 11th, two days later. But they don't have enough to hold him for anything. But they think it's yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, so, yeah, right. uh, he has a criminal record, which uh, including this is afterwards abusing his girlfriends. Um, he got theft and he got animal cruelty, and mainly he was into killing cats, which, as we remember yeah. from Luke Magnell, Magnell, oh yeah, Luke yeah, Magnell, don't fuck yeah. With cats, yeah. yeah, don't fuck with cats, yeah, like, don't. Fuck so this with dude cats. had a history of that, and like obviously, you know, <clears throat> so. Um, Supposedly, he told his pregnant girlfriend, like he was fucking trying to intimidate her at some point, and told her, "Oh, I've had my girlfriends fucking killed before," and he was like, uh, "I'll take them out to my fucking family's bo farms and fucking have the pigs eat their bodies and shit." Like oh. that's what she's telling her, fucking trying to freak her out. She ends up telling the cops that shit, of course. Oh boy, uh, two thousand and thirteen. So he never got in trouble for this shit. Like the case is still open for Jessica Runyon's. Two thousand thirteen, he went to prison for drug trafficking, and uh, they said whenever uh, he was, you know, fucking getting sentenced, he just looked at the judge and he says, "Eat a steak for me." So Kyler yes, this in case dude. just Kyler Runyon. yes. So that was the page of days for today. But very cool, good stuff. Page of fucking day. If Hard anyone out there that listens to us knows that story a little bit better and has ever found a link to any of his music, I need to hear that shit. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that'd be a good one. To I get. feel like it's like a Avenged Sevenfold or something. <laughs> if, if you look up pictures of this dude, he's like a super emo looking guy, oh, and yeah. he's not Some that Alter young. Bridge or something. I think whenever he was going through the trials and shit, he was like twenty nine or thirty. So it's not like he was a really young guy, but seemed like it. You know? Yeah, definitely. All right, so I think we've done our fair share of murdering tonight, creepy, weird, yeah. digging bodies up. I think it's time to crank some metal up and get our fucking minds on some heavy metal. So, Joey, what the fuck do we need to do? What do we need to do? Ha! We need to get our metal on! Just because CK has passed on, he's not done educating the masses. CK will forever be the great metal motherfucker. 
We're here to stomp poser ass and eradicate the planet of their kind. CK has passed the torch to us, and we will forge the fuck on. In CK's name, we will bestow metal knowledge upon all of you. All right. Hell yeah, CK. Always remembering CK and... You know, he's only been gone now. It's not even two months yet, but it's, man, it just seems so weird with him being gone. Yeah. So we keep doing the tribute to CK, and normally guys are eating Pop-Tarts coming into metal, but this time, Joey, I mix it up. Yeah, we got Christmas cookies, Yeah, which is good because it's Christmas time. That's right. Last week we were spoiled with my mom's cookies. But I was out of those, and so I bought some cookies <laughs> today. Out of them. <laughs> out of them. She didn't send as many as she normally does, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, we're in metal, and since CK has been gone, we've been doing this a different way. We take turns. Uh, which one of us has what we're calling got the horns? And tonight I've got them, and I'm going to be doing a band that I've selected for tonight. I've mentioned them here already tonight. Warfect, very, very cool. I stumbled on these guys. It was one of those, I listened to this band. Right. And And it's uh, a suggestion or whatever. Yeah, YouTube Music suggested it, and I clicked on it, and I was like, holy shit. Uh, Really, really dug them. And so I started listening to them, really into it. Contacted the band to see if they would be interested in doing an interview. And their bass player, Chris Wallstrom, uh, was, you know, super cool. He's their kind of point of contact. And so he and I had a conversation on Saturday, which was cool because they're from Sweden. And we did that on what Zoom. What was the time difference on that? Uh, seven hours ahead right. of us. So, uh, yeah, I didn't fuck it up. I didn't. I did good. <laughs> Got your time oh, yeah. zones I right. I did good. Oh, yeah. I did good. <laughs> but... Um, I remember when you first started doing it, you're like, dude, I I got problems with time zones. I know. Time zones (laughs) would fuck me up. But, uh, yeah, we had a good conversation. And so part of what I'm going to talk about here tonight is from that. And then rest of it is stuff I found online about the band. Uh, They've been around since 2008. And they're a three-piece thrash metal band. Uh, They throw in some speed metal as well. Yeah. the guitar player sings, so they're, they're a three-piece with a guitar player that sings. Um, the guitar player's name is Frederick Wester, and the drummer is Man, I think that's how you would say that, Flood. Uh, they're from Udvela, Udvela, Sweden. Uh, 2013, they released their first album, which is called Exoneration Denied, uh, followed up with Scavengers, which is amazing, Uh, Both of them are good. Their latest release, uh, Spectre of Devastation, came out in 2020. So you know how that's been with bands. You know, they they weren't able to tour to support it. So they're kind of bummed on that. But they recorded it themselves, got the album art and everything, and were shopping it around the labels. And Napalm Records picked it up. Hell yeah. And so they got signed to Napalm Records. Uh, which is cool because they have a U.S. Uh, home office or an office. Yeah, Napalm Records. Yeah, yeah, and so I was able to get this shirt I'm wearing from them so I didn't have to pay some crazy high postage and wait three months and you know wait for the hot air balloon to finally get here, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is what me and Sean from In Malice's Wake say when we send stuff back and forth. Um but anyway, the album, uh, Spectre of Devastation, the newest one, is really good. Uh, really like it. Uh, Chris was telling me that their inspiration ranges from the the big three German thrash bands, of course, Creator, Sodom, and Destruction, but also the U.S. bands like Slayer and Exodus. Right. Um, and he said there's a little bit of black metal in there, too, a little death metal, but mostly it's it's a thrash band. Um, I can't say enough how much I like these guys. Very, very cool. I've got a clip. It's about six minutes long uh, from the interview that I did with Chris. 
uh, War- Wallstrom, not Wurstrom, the, the <laughs> listener of ours. Yeah, it's fucked up how similar they are. Uh, Chris Wallstrom from Warfect. Here's the six-minute clip of that, so check this out. Yeah. Um, now, it's been over a year since your last album, Spectre of Devastation, came out. How did the metal community seem to dig that? Fans and and just the the media, did you guys get good favorable reviews from that? Yeah, I think uh, I think we got, got great reviews and uh, uh, I really think people liked the, the album. Uh, it was unfortunate uh, the album release was during the COVID uh, pandemic, but right. what can you do? We we, uh, we had recorded the album and we couldn't wait for for the pandemic to to uh, <laughs> like uh, go over. So 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 we needed to release the album and, and uh, the label wanted to release the album as well. So so we had to release it. Uh, but anyways, I I think uh, we got great reviews and people seem to like it. Uh, yeah. And, grateful of course so yeah oh, yeah i love yeah. the video you did for left to rot i've shared that a couple times on my personal facebook page and a lot of my metalhead friends are like hell yeah thanks for turning me on to war fact so uh, yeah. so that's yeah. awesome the video really turned out good yeah i think so too so so videos are super important nowadays Definitely. when we play live pe- people uh, seem to know the the songs we have videos for, so it's it's uh, very important with videos, and it's important to play the songs live that you have videos for because right. they want to hear them. Yeah, uh, Drone Wars is another good one. I like that video. <laughs> yeah, <too. laughs> it's it's an it's an older video, but it's good. It's, it's still going strong. Yeah, we play it every show, so That's it's awesome. it's a good yeah yeah good stuff. I think the album's amazing. As I told you, I. Uh, Wished I would have learned to you guys sooner, but I'm glad I'm, I'm you know, uh, involved with you guys now. Now, you mentioned a label. Uh, what is the label that you're on and how long have you guys been with them? So we're on Napalm Records and uh, we were actually unsigned uh, when recording the uh, album. Uh, we did the recording and we finished the whole album uh, with the cover art, everything. Uh, and we sent it to, to a few labels and uh, uh, Napalm Records called. And we decided to, to settle on them. So, so we've been uh, with Napalm Records since the release of the album. That's fantastic. And anybody listening that's U.S., I was able to get one of their shirts from the label. They have a North American office, yeah. and I yeah. got it sent to me like super quick, a very reasonably priced. So if you're listening and you want to support these guys and you're in the United States, um, check that out because that's a good way to buy the stuff a l- little cheaper. And, of course, it doesn't take quite as long trying to get here from Europe. So Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the label seems like a good label, checking out some of the other bands, and uh, so that's cool. That's Yeah, absolutely. And that, they've become li- like quite the uh, thrash metal label nowadays. Yes. So there's a lot of thrash metal bands, both new and uh, the old ones as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, speaking of thrash, uh, that's my metal of choice. I like uh, several genres or, or sub-genres in metal. But thrash is always my number one. I hear a lot of influences when I hear you guys. I hear a little bit of Sodom, mostly with the vocals. Uh, Creator, I hear a little bit of. I hear a little bit of the U.S. stuff. What are some of the bands that would have been in the early influences of Warfect when when you guys were starting out? So, obviously, we, we'll listen to the, the Teutonic thrash metal bands like uh, Destruction, Sodom Creator, right. uh, as well as the U.S. Uh, thrash metal scene, Exodus, Slayer, uh, but 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 also we're very uh, inspired by Bra- Brazilian thrash metal bands like uh, Sepultura. Right, uh, they're a huge inspiration to us, uh, uh, and we also have our roots in in black metal. Me and Frederick, so so a lot of inspiration is taken from the black metal. Okay. Uh, from the early 90s when we grew up okay. uh, like dissection 
Right. Uh, we, we listened uh, to Dark Funeral and, and a lot of black metal bands, Swedish, Norwegian, mostly. Uh, but they inspired us as well, uh, writing this music we, we write nowadays. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a mix, like yeah, a fresh metal. I can Speed hear metal, it. Black I can metal, hear it. death metal. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I mean, you guys own it. I mean, it's your sound, but I can hear little glimpses of things when I listen to you. So that's really cool. I always like to ask bands that because sometimes I'm totally off base. And then other times they're like, yeah, you're dead on with what we dig, you know. So been listening to some Australian thrash uh, bands like In Malice's Wake, Harlot, um, you know, there's some really good uh, thrash metal in Australia. I would have never thought of them as being a hotbed of that, but th- there's some good stuff there worth checking out. Yeah. Um, now, I'm a bass player as well. I really dig your tone. Uh, what made you decide to play bass? Well, actually, I was uh, always a guitar player. <laughs> so that was a cool conversation. There you and, go. Fucking uh, you guys get to hear a little piece of that. You'll get to hear the whole thing, uh, the 35-minute interview on Friday, the day after this comes out. Oh, yeah. Uh, Friday, December 17th, and the YouTube video of the conversation that we had. So so check that out. And, Joey, uh, you got a Lost Classic for us tonight? I do have a Lost Classic, and... Uh... That Lost Classic, I'm going to take us back to 1986. Oh, okay. Good year. (laughs) And uh, the album I'm talking about is Metal Church, The Dark. Nice. (laughs) Now, their debut album in 84, just Metal Church, was fucking phenomenally brilliant. Oh, Um, yeah. Like, it was huge. So a lot of times a band can suffer a little bit if you put out an album like that then anything you do afterwards is going to seem mediocre to the fans or whatnot i feel like that's what happened with the dark so when this came out it wasn't as as well received of course but if you listen to it it's got some jams on it uh it was put out on electra fucking had major backing which some people said compromised the band sound wow it made it a little less you know than what it should have been but um it's got some jams on it the fucking uh title track the dark that's probably one of my favorite songs on there it's about being in this house and fucking being like chased around by a demonic fucking demon like it was cool songs were written different back then and uh <clears throat> the album was also dedicated to cliff burton who died nine days before its release and whenever they put this album out they uh fucking toured with anthrax and metallic on the damage incorporated tour and they also opened for megadeth anthrax and king diamond through that time so oh wow yeah cool. metal church the dark go yeah jam. good yeah. stuff man that's good stuff all right, yeah, I love a Lost Classic, and then a band, you know, Warfec, the band a lot of you probably aren't familiar with. We're trying to pass that metal knowledge on. Uh, so what have we been listening to lately? Chris, what about you, man? Uh, I was listening to some fucking Tenacious D. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking Good stuff. Why not? Uh, why not? Some suicidal. Uh, Soulfly fucking just ran again. Always, I'm always whatever, right? Whatever, if you like listening to porno nut graphic novels, fucking <laughs> <laughs> Joey. What about you? I've been listening to the Gormonger album, yeah. We listen to that on the I'm way. I'm happy here. to say it's fucking done. It sounds fucking nice. badass, yeah. Too. Disfiguring the narrative completely done as of today. Great. Um, Congrats. so I've been listening to that. I was listening to fucking Impetigo a bunch as I covered their song Heart of Illinois. So I would just end up fucking... The song's only fucking 50 seconds long, so once you fucking listen to it for, through for a reference, inevitably something else pops up afterwards. It's like 40 seconds. And before you know it, you've listened to like seven Impetigo songs, which is cool. You know? <laughs> yeah. right. uh, so I was jamming that, and uh, fucking still possibly my album of the year, Out of New York, Pyrexia. Uh, just Still jamming that, huh? It's so fucking heavy. Like everything about it is fucking right on what I, you know I want to hear at the time. And so, props to them dudes for putting out a monster album. Twenty twenty one. There was a lot. Whenever we do our fucking wrap up, I got a fucking little list that I'm gonna go through. Pretty fucking good shit this year. So fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. I've been listening to uh, Still Exodus, the new one, Persona Non Grata. That's Votive. <laughs> uh, Ixxi, fucking killer. Warfect, I mentioned them. Pissing Razors, Propane, um, 
just a, a wide range of things. Just really been soaking in some metal lately. Speaking of pissing razors, I've been talking with the singer Ow. Joe Rodriguez. Oh, I thought you went to the clinic. <laughs> oh, no. No, that was later. No. Uh, so, yeah, Joe Rodriguez, the singer, uh, he is uh, going to be doing an interview with us. We just haven't worked out the dates yet uh, or the date yet, but I'll keep everybody posted. Uh, be cool if we could all do that. You know, that'd be a good one to do. Um, but if not, I can do it. Um, also, the 20th anniversary of Chuck Schuldiner's death. I yes. saw that just yep. uh, yesterday. Uh, so, you know, really a crazy, you know, thing. He died young, 34 years old, you know. Dude, but he did a lot of fucking metal ago. for a short life that he had. Um, and I mentioned this many times. You know, moons ago when we were doing the podcast upstairs in my bedroom. <laughs> but I got a letter from Chuck Schuldiner. And you'll have to believe me because I don't have it anymore, but there's a reason. Um, anyway, the uh, the letter was written to me from when I was in my first band in Connecticut. And I used to handle the orders and people would mail stuff in back in the day when they actually mailed shit in. Actually through the mail. Yeah. And so I got a, a money in the mail and a little letter from a guy named Evil Chuck is how he signed it. And he was saying how he was really into the band, that he wanted to order this demo. And here was his address. And by the way, I'm starting a band and I'm calling it uh, Death. And I thought, like, that's kind of dumb because, like, that's just so <laughs> generic sounding, you know. <laughs> And of course, little would you know. Yeah. <laughs> Years later, when death was a thing, I was just like, that can't possibly be the same band. So then I looked and it said Chuck Schuldiner. And I'm like, that's that fucking dude that sent me that letter, I think. And I look and if you read the it's the liner notes, it's either in the first or the second or both of the early death albums. He goes by evil Chuck in there. Right. So. I was like, that's definitely him, because that's how he signed it. But I remember the address was Chuck Schuldiner, but I remember he signed the letter, Evil Chuck. And what happened was I used to have a big box of all these letters that from the old band. And I kept them because they were cool. A lot of them were really cool letters, yeah. you know. And my late wife was getting sick and tired of dealing with this big box every time <laughs> we moved, you know. And she's like, do you even look at these anymore? I'm like, well, no, not really, but I don't want to get her rid of, of not, them, you know? Yeah, I want to keep these. So I was like, at least let me go through it and pick some of them out, and then you could throw the rest of it away, you know? And she just threw it away. And so, yeah, the Chuck Shoulder. Chuck Shoulder and a letter is no more, but I, I swear I had a letter from evil Chuck Shoulder, so. All right, uh, the 666 Club, we've talked about that before. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, our Patreon supporters, so thank you, those that are members. And if you're not, you need to be because it's just 3 bucks a month. And you get 10% uh, off merch. You get the episodes a day early. You get uh, the karaoke songs when they're done. Um, you get all sorts of little bits and pieces that others don't. So patreon.com slash murder metal mayhem and i'll link to that in the episode description also speaking of merch joey those uh, jeff gaither shirts are sick fuck yeah still got some of the original shirts left uh we're getting close to the end of those but uh you know go on our uh, facebook page or follow the link in the episode description, you can order one of the shirts. Those new fucking, the the newer ones, the Gaither ones, they got fucking all four of us on it. Yeah, and CK. CK so CK's on that motherfucker. That's a good one to get, that's for sure. Uh, now, for our year-end episode, we're going to do our top five albums of 2021. And we've done that in the past with CK, so oh, we yeah. want to keep that tradition alive. So send us your lists. If you've got any you want to add to the list, that'd be cool. Now, and we'll talk about it. Let me tell you guys, because, uh, you know, I told y'all last week, my metal segment's coming up again. Chris's is next time. That's right. Then it's mine. 
and I said, if anyone guesses what band I'm going to do from Illinois, that we will send you the activity book, and I'll throw in a Gormonger CD, too. Uh, so I'm going to give you a hint, because no, I saw a couple guesses this week. And nobody nobody was it. right. So I'm going to give you all one hint, and then I'll give you one next time, too, if nobody's got it by then. Hopefully one of you guys gets it. Right. Uh, but the hint. No lineup changes. That's the hint. None. Okay. So that's all you get. No <clears throat> so pick changes. the band that I'm going to do next, and then if you so they're going to get, get an right. activity book, some stickers, a Gormonger CD. I'll throw in a low twelve CD. See, fucking. So we're we're up in the ante yeah. a little bit. There. This has become even better. So let's get them fucking uh, guesses in. Hell yeah! Right. You could post it on the Facebook page or send an email to Pete. At MurderMetalMayhem.com. Hell yeah. Illinois band, no lineup change. That's right. That's right. So good luck. All right. So we have done plenty of metal tonight. So Joey, what the fuck do we need to do? Let's get our mayhem on. A desolated stretch of land in the northern wilderness. Chilling cold I say Into the hold of a ship And through their misery Upon the convict's arrival Frosted and covered in lies Prisoners impelled to forge Above waves of steel arise Remove the undesired Sacrifice holy Are you looking for a gift that is hard to buy for a person on your Christmas list? Well, here at Moskvin Build a Girl Workshop, we offer a unique experience to bring in that holiday cheer. My wife and I can't have children, so I went to Moskvin's Build a Girl, and we have our own very own daughter now. She came with a year's supply of air fresheners to keep her smelling like roses. I really like little girls, if you know what I mean. The Build a Girl Workshop is the perfect way to design my very own fuck doll that doesn't talk back like those other fucking whores that I killed. I mean, dated in the past. <laughs> Come on down to our Build a Girl Workshop today and design your very own living dead girl. We can add a dead trout for a more realistic vaginal odor. We can also customize the smell of your girl's vagina with cookies and cream, vanilla bean, or other basic bitch house special for holiday fun. Pumpkin spice. Oh my god. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, Moskvin, Build a Bear Workshop. We did that one a while back. We've been waiting. Yeah. Been waiting for this episode to bust Perfect. out. Perfect. Oh my god. That was a good one. Before that, the Warfect Hell Left yeah. to Rot. That song about the fucking road of bones I was telling you guys about That's where these people crazy story, up dude. in Siberia built this road. And this railway. It's out the gulag. And as they died, they fell and they put them into the road and the railway and they became part of it. And it's, it's still so there. fucked up. And I'm talking 100 to 200,000 people. Unbelievable. In the 30s and 40s, I believe, uh, in uh, Siberia and Russia. So fucked up. Great band, though. That song, uh, Left to Rot. And then that great commercial we did for the. Moskvin build a bear workshop though so. all right well we are in mayhem and a couple of us have a story to tell so joey you want to go first <clears throat> yeah i got a fucking story so being that it's like christmas time right now i remember fucking <clears throat> this one time whenever i was it was probably it might have been freshman year it might have been eighth grade so junior high early high school whatever just dumb times where it was somebody, I don't know who they were, but they, they had their license, so we was in a car. And probably like five of us fucking, we've been out skating all day or whatever. And we went to uh, to the park in Mattoon where they do fucking their light show for like 
holiday, you know, for uh, for Christmas right, and shit. Right, right. So festival lights or whatever. So we we had gone to this thing, but whenever we were going, <laughs> my buddy had this bottle of these fucking uh, white crosses, and they're fucking oh like my God. like trucker <laughs> speed basically. Right. And back in the day, they used to sell these at gas stations. Like you could buy them, like fucking right. buy the bottle, fucking, <laughs> and you know. I'm I'm young, like I'd be smoking weed or doing whatever back then, but I'm trying to party, so like I'm I'm learning and you know doing all this shit like right. a, as I'm fucking going into the counterculture or whatever. And so these dudes are like, oh, we got these white crosses. And I'm like, oh fuck yeah, and, <laughs> dude! I bet you, I bet you, I ate like this is no bullshit, like thirty or forty. Like, oh my god, remember, you remember how small they were? I mean, yeah, yeah. they were they tiny, were tiny as fuck, yeah. and fucking like a handful. Like I remember eating. So we're at the so we're at the festival of lights, and I just remember fucking my mind is fucking gone. Like it's just fucking <laughs> just, like, going, and, and shit. we're like, oh yeah, and we're like getting out of the car, like running alongside the car with it while we're fucking <laughs> driving through the fucking middle of this town all these fucking people with their kids and all this shit we're like fucking yelling shit fucking just having like a blast like all the way through this whole fucking thing and dude i remember that part was fun as shit but fucking we're just fucking idiots and uh I, we went back to my buddy's house and we fucking stayed with him that night like i didn't go home luckily but we stayed with him and it was like me him and this other dude i remember Sitting at his fucking, by the time we get back to his place, I'm like, I'm trying to just chill and like sit down and holy fuck, <laughs> like my heart's pounding. Yeah. I'm fucking like getting sick. <laughs> like, but if I get up and start doing shit, then I feel a little better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, I couldn't sit still, but I wanted to cause fucking, you know, I'm trying to just fucking like, calm down. Get off this shit. Dude. Hey man, I remember, I don't know how long I went through doing that, like on the couch and in the kitchen, on the bar. Like I kept fucking oh like moving God. around and finally, dude, I remember <laughs> I fucking threw up and it was the war. It was all chemicals I was coming say it was out. All foamy and shit yeah, and, shit, and like, like, like the fucking the pills and all that shit coming out of my nostrils oh. and burning. <laughs> and I was so fucking sick. Oh and from that God. experience, I didn't take aspirin or and like I wouldn't take no pills, pills dude. for fucking years after that <laughs> wow. because all I could taste like even if I took aspirin I could taste that taste of the fucking the pill and, and, the, and yeah. feel it coming out of my nose and like it never went away. <laughs> and so, oh, that'll God. learn you. Yeah, so that, that was <laughs> one of my holiday stories. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. That's nice. Well, I had been uh, working on the finishing up deeper than dead and doing some editing, and I added some stuff about a character in there that's a military and he's kind of modeled after this guy that uh, was a sergeant major when I was at Fort Hood and I kind of took some of his traits and and anyway so I've been thinking about it and so I'm that much what maybe brought this up but I remembered when I got to Fort Hood I was just at a basic training I was in E2 which is a private second class I think that's what they called it. Anyway, um, so I was out in the field. Like, I had only been there like a week. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Right. I ended up at this guard shack at this range out in the field. And this sergeant that was with me, who's supposed to, like, be the guy, like, to help, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm not supposed to know anything, you know. So, because sometimes you'd get, like, VIPs showing up and you had to, like, know how to, like, do the whatever procedures for like a challenge and password and okay. all that kind of stuff. So anyway, he had to go take a shit. <laughs> so I'm there by myself. Okay. It's dark. It's like eight, nine o'clock at night. And I see this Humvee pulling up to the range and I shine my light and I see two stars on the front of this fucking Humvee. And it's I'm like, like Oh shit. <laughs> be my little I'm doing the little rhyme, be my little general to remember what kind of general it was, you know. <laughs> Major general, two star. And I'm like, Oh my god. And it was fucking um he actually wound up running for he didn't get the nomination, but he ran for uh president. Um it's been a few cycles ago. Yeah. But he never made it past the primary. But he was one of the people that was trying to get there. General Wesley Clark. He was the head of the post at Fort Hood, which is a gigantic fucking base. Anyway, Wesley Clark fucking pulls up to this fucking 
guard shack and I have to do the challenge and password, you know. <laughs> so I give him the challenge because it changes every day and the password changes every day. And I gave him the challenge, and he gave me the password from the day before. Oh, and I'm like, like damn it, you know, like, I'm sorry, sir, I can't let you in here. He's like, what do you mean you won't <laughs> let me in here, you know? It's like, dude, you got the password So wrong. I said it again, you know, we went through this whole fucking dance. Anyway, he gets out of the fucking Humvee and is making a big fucking scene, and I'm freaking the fuck out. By now, the fucking, thankfully, this fucking sergeant comes up, Done fucking pooping. <laughs> Done taking to hear me get my ass <laughs> read by this two star general, <laughs> and he's like, "What's going on?" And so they, he's like, "Why didn't?" Or he goes, "He wouldn't let me in." And I said, "Well, because he didn't have the path, you know." And the sergeant's like, "Well, what was the challenge, you know?" And I told him, and I, he's like, "Well, that's it, you know." And then, right. and then he gave the wrong answer again, you know. And so anyway, we're going through all this. Winds up. He tells the sergeant, I'm just pulling your guys' leg. <laughs> he did the right thing because I intentionally you, gave him yesterday's password because I wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to let he me was in. Gonna, yeah, he wasn't going to let me in. Right. He promoted me right on the fucking spot. That's yeah. fucking badass. It was dude. fucking cool. Hell yeah. So, anyway, like a year later, I'm in. Uh, Mississippi or somewhere we were doing National Guard training or uh, no it was at Fort Huachuca Arizona we were at Fort Huachuca Arizona and the same situation I'm working the night shift but it's inside and I'm with the same fucking sergeant the same dude that was <laughs> shitting before was also now not here not around okay? yeah yeah and the problem we had been having was when an officer arrives in the morning to their office or whatever, the highest ranking officer, the building is supposed to come to attention when they walk in and when they leave. Right. And somebody that sees them walk in is supposed to call the building to attention. Yeah, attention, yeah. So anyway, the colonel didn't really give a shit about this. He was not like one of those guys that like made a big fucking deal about yeah, it, especially out it. in the field. Yeah. So whatever. So this major, though, that was beneath him was an ass, and he was, like, fucking reaming people for not doing it, you know? So anyway, the colonel was somewhere else, so this major was the highest-ranking person now. Oh, no. <laughs> and he's getting ready to leave for the day, and I'm the one standing there waiting for this guy to get done shitting again, or whatever he was doing. <laughs> And I have to call the building to attention. So I'm like, okay, they've been getting reamed out about this. I've never done this before. I have a really loud fucking voice. Right. So do you want me to do it like that? Because that's, <laughs> some, I don't know. I really don't know. So anyway, the major fucking puts his hat on. You know, he's got the door open. He's doing it kind of dramatic, letting you know to he's know leaving. that I. So I don't hesitate to right, do it. Right. You know? So if I fuck this up, I'm like dead. You know. <laughs> and he fucking walks out, or he stands there, and I fucking scream, "Attention!" And I like fucking screamed it, right, like right. low twelve style, like okay? loud as fuck. And I remember him looking at me like shocked and then walked out and slammed the fucking door. And I'm like, God damn it. You know? <laughs> so then that sergeant comes out. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, what? And he's like, you're screaming like, like what the fuck is going on with that? You know? <laughs> so anyway, about five minutes later, the major comes back in. And opens the door and he's like, Al Terry, get over here like that. I'm like, fuck. Because I'm thinking I'm going to get oh, destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you got balls this fucking big. <laughs> That's what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> Nobody's doing it. From now on, when I leave here, you got to be standing here to fucking do it. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. So then every night we were there for like 10 days or whatever it was, I had to be on that fucking night shift. <laughs> Like Call the building to attention so yeah. he would get, you know. Get his little glory his, feeling or yeah, whatever. Yeah, think he was a badass. So That's anyway. Funny. 
<laughs> got any military people out there, you probably can relate to that story a little more, but it was uh, just kind of funny. But the same guy was off pooping, doing something that's else, fucking, that's not even, there that's to help That's the best him. part. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've mentioned this before, but Creation of Chaos 3 is my, audio, or is my uh, short story collection. Uh, it's doing good uh, on audiobook. You can get it at Audible, iTunes, or Amazon. You can also buy the physical copies from me at creationofchaos.com. Or you can go locally to the Painted Wraith Curiosity Shop downtown Bloomington, Illinois, and you can check out my books at the Peoria Library in Peoria, Illinois, and also they have them in their bookshop downstairs. So, fuck yeah, lots of ways you can get them. If you buy them from me at creationofchaos.com, you get, get a poster extras. and a bookmark. Yeah, you oh, get yeah. some extra shit. And I might throw in one of these Jesus stickers, too. So Fucking damn right. A couple of them. God you know, damn I got a right. whole pile of them, man. You guys, you got to order some merch just to get a Jesus sticker from Murder Metal Man. <laughs> I mean, really. We're fucking... Why not? Like my dad would say back in the day, my real dad, though, like, I don't smoke, drink, or cuss, but God damn it, I left my cigarettes in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we got a killer cage match. Everybody loves a killer cage match. We got a list of 70 killers that we came up with, 70 objects for them to fight with, and some variables. And we have our listeners pick random numbers, yeah. Chris. Once and again, we have Jody Wharton, Nikki Judy, and Rowdy Bonehouse. Fuck yeah. Thank you, guys. I hope Rowdy Bonehouse is your real name. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <laughs> we got a good one in the cage tonight, Joey. Who do we got going at it here? In the right-hand corner, <laughs> we have fucking David Parker Ray. He will put a dog-knotted penis into your <laughs> wife's vagina. Yep. He will record and tell you all about it it'll keep you in his tool by or his toy box and we also have the gray man <laughs> albert fish who likes he, peanut butter he loves peanut butter he loves <laughs> metal shit in his groin he'll write you a nice letter Alcohol, to your house soak cotton balls in his butthole so on good. fire i mean you know what i'm saying that's uh <laughs> That was actually pretty, pretty much ahead of its time, though. Yeah, it was. I mean, he was boofing? set him on fire, but what I'm talking, talking about, about... boofing? Well, yeah, I'm talking about Shawback. Yeah, his kids doing this shit. You think Shawback don't take a tampon soaked with McCormick whiskey and put it in his ass at work? That's how he gets fucked up at work. Oh, uh, They're never going to know, dude. You pass a breathalyzer, but be wasted. <laughs> A tip, a tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake. And so we got David Parker Ray and Albert Fish going at it in the cage. That's a crazy one. And they're going to have an electric drill. That could get interesting. And a five-gallon bucket, not of eels, Joey, no, but of hot roof tar. Yeah. And then, Chris, what's the variable tonight? <laughs> uh, we got Tony Soprano after a fifth of McCormick's. And did he boof the whole fifth? <laughs> May have. May have. <laughs> so, all right. So uh, that's what we got going on tonight. So, Chris, what do you think here, man? Man. David Parker Ray is a sadistic he fuck. He's a sadistic but, fuck. But Fish, man, I mean, he loved it. Fish is just like an old-ass man. So I kind of feel like he's going to fucking enjoy it. As, and he's I like it physically against fucking David Parker Ray. He's just an old, frail dude that right likes to stab himself with, like you said, with fucking needles and shit in his fucking groin. Right. So I, dude, I don't know. This is a tough one for me, honestly. So I think Tony's gonna get wasted and just kill them all, <laughs> <laughs> like for real, using the drill. <laughs> right. I don't know. This very is very possible. Know, I know it's a weird one, Joey. What do you think, dude? I mean, I, I just feel like David Parker Ray physically is going to fucking destroy Albert Fish. Well, yeah, well, that's what right? I'm saying. 100% uh, uh, now, done. But what I feel like is going to happen is he's going to go and grab that fucking electric do drill because, of course, he's the fucking toy box killer. Right. So he's going to grab that drill. He's going to start fucking plugging into fucking Albert Fish, and Albert Fish is just going to look at him and start smiling. Yeah. And he's like going to be like, oh, that's awesome. True. But guess what? You're not fucking doing it quick enough, so he's going to grab that fucking hot-ass roof tar. He's going to fucking dump it on himself over his own face. Oh, wow. And tell him to fucking drill into the anus a little harder as he dies. 
So David Parker Ray is going to fucking win fucking that way. And Tony Soprano, drunk on the McCormick's, he's going to be over there, see what just happened, and be like, I'm not a sick fuck at all like I thought. <laughs> and he's going to fucking quit the mafia. <laughs> oh, goddamn. <laughs> he's like, that ain't, we ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that fucking shit. Not after what I just saw. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, I, I got to say, too, I think David Parker Ray obviously physically – is going to beat the crap out of Albert Fish. But, you know, if he goes for the drill and Fish goes for the hot roof tar, I mean, anything's possible. But I think physically, though, David Parker Ray. But I think David Parker Ray and Tony Soprano drunk would actually be a pretty good fight. But I'm thinking Tony Soprano is going to beat his ass. So There you go. I think I'm going to go for Tony Soprano. Chris, you had thought Tony would maybe come out on top here. Yeah, yeah. So, good one tonight, though. Interesting. I saw David Parker Ray's name. I hadn't seen him in the cage in a while. So, all right. Well, we have done plenty of mayhem tonight. So, boys, I think it's time to hit the fucking out. Escaping yeah. reality that surrounds you. Prayers in the world can't help you now. I right. I love that song. Some death, uh, spiritual healing uh, from the self-titled so spiritual healing album. But, you know, the 20th anniversary of passing a Chuck Schuldiner had to play that one. Um, but a quick story about spiritual healing. Uh, a Wes, a former low 12 drummer, uh, uh, he got a burnt CD from his brother. And his brother wasn't the best speller, so it said spitual healing. <laughs> and we just laughed because every time he would take it out of the, you know, back in the day with the binder with yeah, all the yeah, CDs, he would pull out spitual healing and we would call it spitual healing. Play spitual healing, yeah, bro. put spitual healing in, man. And everybody would be like, that didn't know, would be like, like what the fuck what, is that? Is, you know? that? is that some like... You'll know. Yeah, you'll hear Parody it. shit? What's going so, on? So anyway, not to not to wet dog on Wes's brother, but I always thought that was funny. All right, bumper music tonight. Uh, Warfect, Death, and Propane. Sounds like a nice lineup of fucking <laughs> bands here tonight. And thanking uh, Chris from Warfect for doing that interview with us. Hell and yeah. go check those guys out. Warfect.net is their website. Uh, they got a Facebook page. Um, I know they're on other social medias, so uh, go check them out. Uh, they got a YouTube channel with their videos on it. They've got several really good videos. Uh, so plenty of things you can go listen to for free and watch. Uh, also, thanks to Winners Gore, guys, who got some really cool stuff yeah, from so her. Gonna, like the keychains, Chris, you know, oh, kind of yeah, cool. Said everyone is unique. They're not. Oh, yeah. No one is the same. That's badass. So that's pretty cool. And uh, she sent us some Christmas ornaments. Joey looked like fucking eyeballs. They and do. It's pretty awesome. Looked like an eyeball and a ball of meat. Like, like right. Flesh ball exactly. of flesh. It's awesome. Almost like a testicle. Yeah. It's like she a makes testicle some with an really eyeball, cool dude. fucking uh, uh, masks and fishing lures yeah. and lots of cool things. So you can stock up on your gore for Christmas, winnersgore.com. And if the website's not up, they were having some issues with, excuse me, with the host. So, yeah. Go to Facebook and look her up on winners as Winners Gore, and you'll find it. And you contact her there. Um, and so next week, I'm going to play a clip from that interview I did with Kelsey. And then on New Year's Eve, you'll get the full 30-minute uh, interview um, and then also the video of that on our YouTube channel that same oh, night. Yeah. So a lot of good shit coming this month, guys. I mean, we're throwing a lot of stuff at them. It's fucking Christmas, That's man. right. We're trying to be generous, but, you know, thanks to Winner's Gore, you know, making, uh, you know, helping us put this together. Yeah. Uh, Murder Metal Mayhem music by Low 12, and the metal segment uh, intro music is by who, Chris? Crysix. Crysix. And uh, thank you for everybody out there listening, guys. We always, you know, get the great, uh, you know, 
responses and we get some really good listener comments. So, Chris, what's the first one up tonight, man? We got Paul Sanderson says, I've been listening to you guys for a month in Dallas. Love the show. So glad I listened to my cousin who told me about you. So, yeah, yeah, props to your cousin. Yeah, thanks to your cousin, man. And to you, Paul. That's fucking awesome, man. Got a lot of listeners in Texas. So we got Tex is in Texas. (laughs) So we got a lot of women. Maybe Tex is his cousin. Got a lot of women, (laughs) man. That love text that think he sounds fucking sexy. Right? So, <laughs> you know, so who knows? He's just we've got a sex symbol on the staff. Yeah, here. man. Uh, Joey, what about the second one, man? Dare Double Dan. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He said, uh, you guys kick ass. I'm a listener in Grand Rapids, and this shit just kicks ass. I love the serial killer shit mixed with the heavy metal. The karaoke stuff you guys do is hilarious. Thank you, Dare Devil Dan. You're the man. Hell yeah. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Betty Boop 77 commented, my husband and I love listening to you guys on road trips. We really like the episode you did on the Sing Sing prison. So I was just sing, last sing week. Song. So that's very cool. And then Chris, I'll let you have this last one. Thanks. This is a, uh, this is a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly Parton's boobs says, uh, love it when you guys have texts on the podcast. The Sing Sing episode was great. So Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I told you it was big. <laughs> that's right. And even Dolly loves texts, you know, hell so yeah. that's a good thing. All right. Well, check us out. MurderMetalMayhem.com. You can listen to those past episodes. Uh, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and subscribe to that YouTube channel, especially with all these new videos coming up so you could subscribe to it and then you get notifications when we have new content uh check out the show on amazon music and pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts and give the show a rating leave a comment it helps us out so thank you if you do that and if not just leave one man uh support the show join that 666 club that patreon three bucks a month link to all this stuff in the episode description including creationofchaos.com if you want to pick up one of my books or you can go on the audiobook side and get it from Audible, iTunes, or Amazon. And I can't let you guys go without hearing a karaoke song. Still in the holiday spirit. (laughs) This is a classic karaoke song I did a few years ago and we're doing Christmas songs all month long. So crank it up. And until next time, keep one foot in the gutter. And keep your hands making busy fucking sex dolls. Ooh. (laughs) Crossy the snowman was a jolly happy song With a corn cup pipe and a button nose And two eyes made out of gold Crossy the snowman it's a fairy tale, they say He was made of snow, but the children know How he came to life one day There must have been some magic in that old town that they found For when they placed it on his head He began to dance around Rusty the snowman was alive as he could be the children say he could laugh and play Just the same as you and me There must have been some magic in that old silk and dream Oh, when they placed it on his head He began to dance around Frosty the snowman Knew the sun was hot there so he said, let's run and we'll have some fun Now before I melt away Thumpity, thump, thump, thumpity, thump, thump Don't let Frosty go Mother, mother, man